Hi, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. The Brother Brand Ambassadors have taken over the page again today, Crafting with May. How are you, May? Hi, I'm good. We moved locations today. Both of us did. I know. I'm actually working from home today, which is very unusual. But uh, I was on my way to my studio, aka She Shed, and I don't know if there was an accident or doing construction, but I didn't move for 10 minutes and I thought I better go back home or we May's going to be live by herself. <laughs> Yeah, and I, there's some kind of construction and craziness right outside the studio window, so I came down to the hallway space between the living room and the kitchen. Nice. So, I, so for everyone who has never joined our show before, say hi, say where you're from. We ha May has a really fun project today uh, that she's going to show us with rhinestones and bling, but we are live streaming on Facebook and YouTube, and you can always leave questions. We try to answer them at the end, or um, but... Well, I guess it's just kind of like today's Tuesday. Check off. The <laughs> I keep thinking today's Wednesday, but one of these days I'm going to get used to it. So I see everybody rolling in and I see part of the wolf packs rolling in. This is just fantastic. I just love these live shows connecting with everyone from all over the world. So May. So, so what room are you in, by the way? You are in a different spot. Yeah. So I'm kind of between the kitchen and the living room. Nice. Because that's where all the cords can <laughs> <laughs> connect. <laughs> that's where all the cords and everything can hook up and where I can get to a table to have a makeshift studio today. Awesome. So I saw the bling that you're bringing to the party today, and I absolutely love rhinestones. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so one of my favorite things, and it's totally underused, and it's so great because this week, I've been trying every week to obviously make projects, but then I also want to try to clean some things, you know, deep clean some things, make room for some things. And I discovered my packet of rhinestone, the, the material and the transfer material. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I forget about this stuff. I really should craft with it. So it was kind of a happy cleaning accident that I found it. And then <laughs> And then I remember also the machine in front of me, this is the SDX 230D, which is a dealer machine. It's the Disney machine. And it actually has built in rhinestone patterns and the machine comes with a sample so that you can try that. So before you get the whole rhinestone package and all that, which is super fun and super cute. That's awesome. And you know, it's funny because a lot of the dealers lately have been doing Facebook live shows with that scan and cut because they're using it uh, they can take applique designs out of the luminaire or the stellaire and transfer it to that machine where it cuts the applique out and bring it back to the machine. And I just tried that the other day. I'm doing these little fish towels. They're so cute at the office. <laughs> I'll have to show everyone that tomorrow. But it's so easy because they that you can bring the designs over there, have everything cut, go back to the machine and embroider. So that Disney model is fantastic. Yeah, there they have so many it has so many bells and whistles, but to me the rhinestone being able to just like have some really cute Disney rhinestones right here and and we'll show you said we'll show at the end. If you don't have the Disney machine, by the way, guys, if you're thinking I don't have the Disney machine, I'm gonna tune out, you can use the rhinestone cut function. You can get the kit, get it all set up on Canvas workspace and get rolling with it with any of the models. Um, this is just the only one that has the, the designs, a couple of designs already built in. And at the end of the show, I have Canvas Workspace open on one of my computer screens that I'll share with everyone so they can kind of see what's in there in case they've never even used that. So perfect. So I'll just kind of explain. So I'll just kind of explain, first of all, that with the rhinestones. So if you've ever seen the appliques where it's a rhinestone design and you're going in and you're you know, making some kind of, it probably looks something like this where there's rhinestones stuck to some kind of a sticky material. And what you're supposed to do is then iron it onto whatever you're ironing it onto. Oops, I'm going to bring your other, I'm going to put your other, <laughs> I'm going to put your okay. hands up here. <laughs> How's well, that? <laughs> there we go. So if you've ever seen that where you can purchase a rhinestone design like this, essentially that's what we're making. What we're going to do is we're going to take the pattern, and in this case, it's an already done, already designed pattern for us, and we're going to cut all these little circles out, and then after all these little circles cut out, we have to do the really fun job of picking all the little circles off the material, off this velvet material, 
And then we can create our own. Now, one of the things I love about this is that this can be reused as many times as you want. So once I've made this, I can just keep this piece of, it's kind of a velvety material. I can just keep this and I can redo this design as many times as I want. You know, if I have multiple friends that I want to make gifts for or whatever, I can just keep reusing this so I don't have to completely redesign every time. And I love that. I'm bringing you back up here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm watching you and reading the comments. I'm multitasking. <laughs> you are. So to get started, I've got, whew, I've got things trying to stick to me. I've got my mat. Okay. And I've got the material. Now you can use a full sheet of material if you want. I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to do it. There's more than one design, so we'll do a different design. So I'm going to cut and place my material on my mat. And we should work, let's see. Yeah, we should still be sticky enough. And then I'm just going to open my machine and load my mat. And as far as the scanning cut end of things goes, it stays pretty much the same. And then we're gonna go into pattern. So on this machine, let's see if I, Scoot that up. No, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm seeing if that was well, actually maybe actually, it does. Yeah, I, we can see it better like that. That's great. Okay, perfect. So in the Mickey Mouse, you know which one it is because there's two here. There's one that is a crown, and then there's another one that's a Mickey head. And this one has a Mickey head, a, a Minnie Mouse head, and then the love, the one that I already did. So you pick whichever one you want. And well, like a little bit, put it back down. Let me just see if I can see your screen a little bit better down. It's just like a little bit hot. Mm. I don't know why we can't see it very well, but I think it's just really bright. It's yeah. sometimes kind of hard and I don't have control over the, I can't force the camera to darken itself. So just everyone just go with us. <laughs> so, it'll be real quick here. So it is about three by three and a quarter and I'm going to pull it down here. And then I'm going to push this button here, which is going to scan our mat, which we want because we want to know where we're on that mat. It okay, so here. May, I have to just ask, this is such a squirrel moment while you're scanning in. What is that really cute thing in the background? I spy a rainbow something. Oh, on the yes. Let me pull distraction. <laughs> That's right. That's funny. So I was taking pictures of this. And I didn't, um, one of the things I've been doing a lot of is um, button crafts. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I was taking pictures of it before down here in the nice morning light. And I haven't put it, I guess I didn't put it away. I've been doing that. And then I've been doing a lot of resin with like buttons and glitter. And here, I'll put it up on the other one. Oh, that's cute. Oh, the other one. Okay, let me bring that one up. Hold on a yeah, sec. You can see. So oh, it's yeah. full of fun stuff and making little containers for myself. Totally unnecessary. It's just been, you know, having fun. Having fun with things. <laughs> That's all good, though. Okay, so I, I won't uh, interrupt you anymore. Oh, no, please do. Couldn't help so, it. So <laughs> we've got our material. We scanned our material, and you may not, you'll, you'll be able Yay, to see. Yay, now what, we can see because the black fabric's on the back. Exactly. I know. I love, I love that. So you can just make sure that it's somewhere within your material. And as soon as you do, you're going to select cut. And remember, this mach these DX machines have the auto blade, which means it will sit there and it will detect the depth of the material and cut accordingly. We just want to make sure that we also turn the half cut function on because we want it to cut. So I'll show you on this. So this material, the reason that works is that's a backing material. Oh, okay? yeah. So it's this is sticky. And the backing material is not. So this sits on there real nicely and creates the little grooves for all the rhinestones to go in. But in order for that to work, we need to just half cut, not fully cut. So, oh, and I've managed, oh, there it is. I was gonna say, how did I manage to lose my stylus when I'm not even in the studio? But there we go. <laughs> I thought I was the only one that does that. <laughs> okay, I need to keep it in this little spot right here where I'm supposed to, in theory, keep it when I'm using my machine. I just never seem to remember to stick that there. So it's gonna cut all the little circles. 
And this one is a nice one for on the air because it only takes two minutes. This one took, I think, eight minutes or nine minutes. So. Well, that's cutting. I'm just going to bring this up here for a sec. So I just have to tell you a cute story. So I was taping It's So Easy TV probably uh, a couple years back before the Disney machine came out. And I was trying to do the rhinestones. I did a really cool thing like you could you all can see at the bottom, it's cutting all the holes in there, which you'll see closely in a minute. And so when I went to put the rhinestones to get them all organized, <laughs> I wasn't wearing my glasses and it's live and I'm using it with a brush as you'll see how, well, on ours, we had to like actually filter them in those holes. And I made the biggest mess. We had to cut for like 20 minutes so I could get all of them to go right. <laughs> I just could not get them the right way. Oh my gosh. I know. So, um, I'm looking forward to watching like somebody actually know how to do this because I had just learned. <laughs> it was scary. There's, it's definitely, and you definitely know when I've been doing it because like yesterday my daughter said that on my wrist there was a line of little black dots. Oh. <laughs> and she goes, oh, you were making rhinestones, were you? <laughs> That's yes, great. I was making, you always do because there's always a couple that'll end up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's good. really so fun. And I know that... Um, for example, my daughter's for a, you walk out with the stylus in your hand. I have been there and I have done that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. okay. So let me bring this slow, bring you back up here. here I'm going to just move things back a little. There we see Minnie uh, and Mickey. Yay. So you've got a couple different ways of doing this. I don't cut my, the velvety kind of material here. I don't cut it super, super tight around like I would for vinyl only because, well, you'll see in a minute when we go to put the rhinestones. So when I lift off here, some of these little guys are gonna be cooperative and kind of just kind of pop off here or not. There we go. So we don't worry too, too much about, you know, the, the actual little black dots. We just need them to come off and, you know, go away. We don't need them. We don't want them. So what you're gonna do, is just get rid of them and i'm working very slowly here just to make sure and i tend to kind of try to scrape them away because if i set this back down we don't want them to be picked back up by the materials this is sticky right so i try to go nice and slowly here and i say try because sometimes i get i don't know just kind of bored of the whole situation and think oh my gosh i just have to be done with this. <laughs> so I know, I'll know. i tell you, there's a reason we didn't do this one live on there because this one takes quite a while. That's <laughs> a lot more rhinestones than you think it is. And I, I remember just cutting it. May, you having an entire armful of black dots from that. I mean, I, that's just so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, you know, and it's, it's, it is funny, but it's one of the, this is kind of a fun little one. You can't really be in a hurry for this, as you'll see. We'll get this one done pretty quick because little Mickey Mouse is not very big here. And then I just, again, I just kind of, they're all sticky, so they all stick together. And then I just kind of swoop them away <laughs> now and again. But it's nice. I'm using just kind of the side of this pick. Oh, yeah. We, cool. I just love, yes, the hook tool does make it really easy. I love this hook tool. I use it for so many different things. It's, I, it's very well loved and it has like paint and things on it because I all use it for things it's not even intended to, to necessarily get used for because it's just such a good tool. Okay. And if you can't, I like to do it this way. I know of people who try, I say try because I can never get it to do, but starting like this. So you guys can see fancy black, <laughs> black dot disease. All right, so let there me open your hand up by itself so they can see better. <laughs> there should be a name. So I know people who try to sit this direction and, and see the edges and pick the dots. The problem that I personally have is I can't see, you know, I'm in a very bright, well-lit room and I'm turning it and everything and I can't really see it. So for me, I find that if I do it from the back, like so, and in theory, I suppose we would be able to just pull this off and all the little dots would just pop right off. But I've yet to actually have that. I don't know about you, Angela. I've yet to actually have the little rhinestone dots cooperate quite that much. Most of the time I find they need a little more coaxing than. Yeah, I need, I. but you know, I didn't have that tool and I was using um, 
that makes it so much easier. I was using tweezers to push them out and it's just oh, so much goodness. extra work. I like this. Um, sometimes, well, sometimes like I've got one right here right now where it's being kind of a, kind of a pill. I'll just kind of push the tool in here and then go at the front. If I already have one where I can see that it's coming off, but it's <laughs> I got it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're crafting and uh, the, this whole group that's playing with us. They're stuff, fantastic. But... We do. You know what? <laughs> so there is a crown in here and you know what I'll have to do is after we're done with the live, I'll, I'll pay one of the kids off to do this with one of the crowns and we'll release the Corona crown. We'll have yes. it for next week. <laughs> I'll wear a shirt. I'll put it on my shirt for next week. <laughs> All right. I'll do it as well. That's fun. Yeah. So, I mean, we're more than halfway here already. So it's, it's, if, it, if you have a small design like this, it's not bad. It doesn't take that, that long to weed it, but it is a little bit of time. And I'm glad we have a chatty bunch today because it is, I know it, it does take a few minutes, so. You're doing all the hard work. I'm laughing with everyone. They're coming. I love it. Fantastic. So uh, there is a question. If you don't have a brother dealer next to you, so go to the brothersows.com uh, Facebook page, and if you scroll to the bottom, you can put in your address, and it'll find a dealer close to you. So many of them are, well, they can't ship the Disney one, but they can ship certain things out of their um, dealer. So call them and find out, you know, there's different levels of scan and cut and things like that. But if you go to brothersos.com, scroll to the bottom, punch in your zip code or where you live, and it'll bring up the closest one and call them and they'll help you out. That's just an easy way. Absolutely. And it's a really, and a lot of them will help work with you on figuring out, you know, how they can help you or what they can do for you. Right. So when I have you see here, we're past the halfway point. We just have the one more ear and the little connection between. What I'll, good. what I'll tend to do is then switch my side so that I'm not going all the way across and all the way over. Oh, that's a good idea. That way it just starts to get a little easier if we have a little less. Um, oh, and I wonder where my neck, <laughs> that one does, that one wants to hide. We'll figure it out. And if I ever have a situation like I have right this very second in back where I'm looking at it and going, oh, wait a minute, where's the other, like there should be, there should be something here. You know, there should be, you know, this, there is no end on this design. So where exactly is the next one. If I'm not sure, what I'll tend to do is what I'm doing right now, which is just keep going with the side that I can see and that does make sense. And then once we get that connected, okay, so see there, I connected. So then what I'll do, if I'm just kind of looking at it and I can't really see where I think the next one should be, then I'll put it down. And now we can see I'm in Mickey's ear there. So that's Mickey's ear. Oh, there we got one. There you go. Got one stuck to me. We're in McGee's ear, so it should probably be over here someplace. And then what I'll kind of do, oh, and it's already cooperating. Then what I'll kind of do is just kind of use my my tool on the side on the front side. And can you see how that the tool is encouraging our little circle friends here to pop up? Yeah. So I'll just very, very gently because we don't want to break anything or go in the wrong way. Now, if for some reason you're doing this and you do, in fact, tear it or you force a hole where there shouldn't be one, don't stress out because I have done that. And what I've found, and you'll see in our next step, which is just to add the rhinestones, it's very forgiving. You can, if you have a whoopsie, you can work around it because the rhinestones will go in the spots. And if there's one that, you know, if you accidentally create a spot that shouldn't, I did that once where I was convinced there should be a hole there and I forced it and I popped myself a hole with my tool. And oh, then no. realized, oh wait, no, there's not supposed to be one. It's totally fine because what you can do is just not let the rhinestones go there. Or if one lands there, you just go back in and remove it. So I love how, I always love, especially with the scan and cut, so much about it is so forgiving. It is. There's so, so much about it. A lot of people are asking, do they all have auto blade? Well, there are different levels of the scan and cut. This is the top of the line with the Disney. This was a limited edition that's only sold by brother dealers. So that's what I was referring to. So if you call your local dealer, I'm sure that, um, well, a lot of them are, depending on where they live, 
They can have people come to the store, but in a limited amount. And others are doing pull up, pop open your trunk, and they drop it in too, <laughs> along with sewing machines. But the D, well, if it's a, as long as it's a DX machine, though, it will have auto blade. It won't have Disney patterns, but it'll have auto blade. Yeah. So the other one, that's what I was trying to think. Can you make the picture screen larger, less words showing on page? There's no words on the page right now, but. Oh, I think so. you need to turn, if you're watching on Facebook, you need to push to expand your video. Yeah, that's, there's a little box, I think in the bottom right or the top right. I always get them mixed up. There's the, there are the rhinestones in the brush that we There we go, okay. Time. So we've got the rhinestone, the design. We've got our we got our black dots that we want to be very careful not to spread on anyone. And then the rhinestones, these rhinestones are like this. These came with the machine. When I got the machine, it had a little starter kit. Uh, otherwise, the way that most of us would get the rhinestone kit, the brush, all of the supplies, what you would do is purchase the rhinestone kit. So that activates the canvas workspace, which we'll show you a little later, because these aren't the only designs you could do. You could do custom designs, you can do built-in designs. And then what you wanna do is just take your brush and everybody's got a little different style. If you wanna move in kind of a circular motion, what ends up happening, and you can start to see it already, the little rhinestones are gonna pop into the little spots. So the little rhinestones are gonna fill it up. Now, if you're impatient or you think, it's taking too long or you've got one that's just determined to be just way, way, way too irritating or it's just not going well, then what you can do is just come in here with your tool or with your finger or however and just demand that they behave themselves. <laughs> Make them behave. But you just kind of roll it around and the brush is really soft so it won't damage. And these are heat fix rhinestones, so these will iron on. Yay. Oh my gosh, I love this tutorial because I can just think of, I remember when this first came out, I could not wrap my head around how do you do rhinestones with the scan and cut? And I see a ton of people mentioning the same thing. They always wondered how to how to do this. So it's really so simple, but it's so fun to watch. It is really simple. And I'm glad, I'm glad I brought it out today. I'm glad I was cleaning that drawer on, on this particular week. So I'm just getting rid of all of the little heat fix rhinestones because Fun story and fact, I have ruined, this is a felt mat that I use when I'm doing a lot of heat work when I don't want the ironing board out. Um, it's just a thick felt mat. But uh, I have ironed stones into a previous thick <laughs> felt mat. And we would prefer to not do that again. So, no, the, we don't. and again, the fun part about the work is once it's done, we can reuse this templates so we don't have to keep redoing mickey mouse we can just now reuse that as much as we want now what i've got this is the transfer material okay so this is the trickiest part so when i go and actually go to touch this the rhinestones are going to kind of want to jump up onto it they're going to be very attracted to this so before I get going, I want to make really sure I like to go from the middle, kind of fold it like so. Oh, I know oh, that's clear. a good idea. So that the whole thing, because if they all start jumping, the ones on the outside, they can wiggle and move. And don't worry, we can fix it. We can adjust it. But it's just easier if you don't have to. I did a giant one, a giant monogram one, and it was hundreds and hundreds of stones of different colors. And then I was sloppy with this. Oh, and no. I, I had to hand pick them off and redo the whole thing. It was just not pretty. Oh, so no. we just go for it. And I like to press down on the outer edges right away because not all of these are trapped yet. Not all of these have committed. But by doing that, I make sure that we don't have anything bouncing around. Because the most vulnerable time that your stones have are from when you put them in here to when you transfer them because there's nothing forcing them to stay there. They can kind of bounce around. And then I use the little brush and just kind of firmly press. And then we're gonna have some magic. I go real slow like this just to make sure everybody picked up. If anybody didn't, you can just lay it back down and try again. And ta-da! We wow. have a rhinestone Mickey. That is so easy. 
It really is as long as you are not in a rush and as long as you are taking your time with this. So then I'm just putting this, there's a slick side and a not so slick side. You want the slick side to be facing the rhinestones. So this can stay like this however long you want. So if you're not ready to do it, or, you know, in my case, um, normally I would have done this on the, on the table and then turn to where the felt mat usually lives and iron it onto there. But if you don't have that kind of space, or if you're just, maybe you're working on it and you're thinking, okay, well, I'm not quite ready for that, then I, I need another minute, then this way you can save it without any fuss. Which so, is so nice. And you know what? It's so much fun. It really is fun. So now so I'm going to move. I just saw a couple questions. I'm just going to pop in here real quick that um, they wanted to know um, how many designs. So I just looked this up for you all. I left a link for all the scan and cut machines, but many were asking how many. There's uh, 1,435 built-in designs in the Disney scan and cut. That's a lot. And then the XDX225, which is also sold at a dealer, has 1,303 built-in designs. So that helps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have a lot. And a lot of designs, yeah, and there's so, I mean, there's so many designs and so much stuff you can do. Okay, so I have all this heat transfer vinyl bits and pieces here. So one, one of the things you could do, you this could keep adding on. Super, super quick question. Can the transfer paper be reused? Um, it can. I just haven't had a lot of luck with it because it tends to take enough heat when I transfer it. Sometimes it takes so much heat that it kind of warps and won't quite be as nice as I would like and flatten out quite as much as I would like after. Uh, then, so okay. in theory, you could. It's just not, I think it kind of depends. Like if I'm doing a really dense design, maybe it would be work better like this Mickey. We'll try this Mickey first and see how that goes and it might work well. Uh, but other ones maybe wouldn't work as nicely. So actually, I'm going to do blue. So I'm gonna cut us a simple little part to put with our Mickey. All right. You can layer stuff. And I'm just double checking. So he is, yeah, so if I do this part about four inches, I think it'll work. Okay. I'm just putting my vinyl down. Okay, Christina wants to know, how do the rhinestone designs hold up in the washer? Um. You know, I haven't done a ton. The shirts, a couple of shirts that I've done, they do okay, but I cold, I cold wash and hang dry. I don't put them through the dryer. Yeah, the dryer, I would think, well, I can even think of other designs I have that I've purchased. When they go through the dryer, the heat mixes with the heat from the rhinestones, and I usually end up with a few in places I didn't want. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through and pick... Oh, actually, I think I'll pick a star. Oh, Oops, Nikki says they wash beautifully and she's never lost a stone. So, Nikki. That's uh, awesome. So, I'm going to do a star. And now watch this fanciness. So, I want to make a star. And I pulled a star in there. That's not so exciting. But I think, I think that this should work. I've done this once before. So, watch. We're going to scan the mat. I am not cutting that rhinestone. Okay. It is just floating on there. And I'm even going to pull it off the back here so it doesn't go sliding back through. But when this pops up, you can see where that rhinestone is. Oh, yeah. You can see where it is. So I'm trying to figure out, is this star going to be a good size? Is it going to be way too big, way too small? I'm thinking I want it a little smaller because I want the ears to pop off the, oh, actually, no. You know what I'm thinking now? I'm changing my mind. And that's <laughs> what I love. Well, that's what I love about scanning is I'm looking at this and I don't like how long this is. I don't like, I don't think I'm going to like the end result. And I love that the scan and cut because we can scan it in and see exactly what's going to happen. I may look at this and this might have been something that I thought was the best idea ever. And then I scan it in and look at it and go, or not, and I can change it. <laughs> and I love that because it gives me a moment there where I can see what I'm doing and if what I'm doing is a great idea or a terrible one. So, I mean, it doesn't save me 100% of the time, but it really can save me a lot of times 
when I think of shape, you know, especially something like this where I have kind of a vision of what I think I'm going to do. And then I see the shape and the reality is, no, that's not really going to work. Then we can just adjust. So all I'm doing is moving these stars around and I don't have to avoid the area that looks like the Mickey rhinestone because it's not actually there. I had just floated that on top, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna make a couple stars and then make them a little smaller, and then we'll go ahead and cut them out. So now instead of one thing behind Mickey, I'm changing my mind and I want little things around him. So I love that, but that is such a fit. When I figured out I could scan this through so that I could see what I was looking at, it saves me so much material and so much money and time. I it love really that. does. And because for those of you who can't you get a preview, if you can't see her screen real well, uh, it's just because it's a little bright. So you just got to kind of go with the buttons that if you're following at home and trying to do this or you're replaying this and following along, just watch where her where she touches and you'll see the and same. You can also watch the live videos. It's hard because we don't have as much control, but you can also watch um, YouTube. Tons of YouTube videos where I promise the screen is very visible if there's a specific trick or technique. So this will go real fast. It's just gonna pop these out. Okay, now I think we're ready to assemble somebody. So, up, back this up. I love how small the scan and cut goes when you push it away. I know, it, <laughs> it, really, it really does. So, my thought was a fun little tote bag to gift. Oh, what a great idea. And that was my, yeah, that was the other day I went, man, you're going to have to make this star so much bigger than that tote bag. That's not going to work. So <laughs> I'm feeling like, especially right now, giftables are great because, you know, people are kind of trying <laughs> stuck at home and, or just, you know, especially like little kids. I'm, I'm thinking my little neighbor, I think this would be so cute. So, excuse me, I got a cough. <clears throat> so. Uh, when you're going to do this, you're just going to figure out just like any heat transfer vinyl. Where do you want it? How do you envision this? What would you like? So I'm just going to put it down there. And because it's sticky, it'll hold. And then I'm going to get out. This is such some kind of a setup I've got here. <laughs> Here's on the ground over here on this chair. I've got some fabric. We'll get this done. So I take a little bit of fabric and cover over when I'm going to press. That's a good idea. That's what I've always been told to do is put a little bit of fabric on and then press. But even and though when we do when we do a lot of things, even just on garments for garment sewing, we always have some form of a press cloth. So that it just will keep that. I think that's a great idea. And just grab a piece of fabric. Don't be touching. Well, and I'll tell you, I had I have had it happen where something was on the iron. Uh oh. And I went to press, and luckily there was a press cloth. Now, I don't want this beautiful fabric run, but luckily there was a press cloth. And because of it, when I lifted, the, there was some kind of, um, like, I don't know if it was like melted heat transfer vinyl. There was something on it, and it melted and smeared on the press cloth. So, luckily, the project underneath was not ruined. So, then what I'll do is just kind of check, and I don't think, yeah. So, when I lift this up, and I'll lift this up, I don't know if you guys, Okay, well, actually, I, I can because I can lift it up here. So you see how there's a couple of stones that are transferred? Yeah. But, but they have it all transferred. So we don't want to, obviously, we don't want to lift it up yet. But we don't want to mess with that. If they have it all transferred, then we just need to repeat with the pressing. And to me, I don't know about you, Angela, to me, it's a balance of enough pressure and enough time, but not so much that you go and you know, hurt, yeah. hurt your it project. It bad. <laughs> and I will also confess that if I get irritated enough with things not transferring, I will remove the cloth and just, if there's one spot, yeah, <laughs> that one spot just won't transfer for me. And I also find, do you find too, if I have to let it cool down for a minute, mm -hmm. it needs to cool down for a minute. And I, that's a funny one because I know I was having a lot of trouble when I first started and I had no idea that that was a thing. Let it cool down. Give it a moment before you start lifting. Here we are. We're going to. And now I'm going to press down like this directly only because if I've got a really specific spot that I can see, you know, all the other spots around it are being really well behaved. But there's maybe and I don't sometimes maybe it's just that that particular point can't get the 
heat or the pressure that it needs to transfer. You know, if there's just like one spot that's needing more pressure and needs help. Hey, Christina, she says, can you do an iron cleaning tutorial? I have one of those. It, I think it's on my blog. And oh, I had an that iron that was just a super hot mess and I saved it. So I'll have to look it up on um, and making a and maybe making press cloth recommendations. Okay, so press cloth, I usually prefer to use uh, lightweight cotton or even uh, silk organza. If you can find that, that's a little more expensive, but uh, just a piece of cotton. A lot of times I'll just grab a piece of muslin uh, that I find that I use for, you know, testing my patterns or any cotton works great because it's a natural fiber and the steam can get through it. That's a great, that's a great one. I, this is just a, yeah, this is just a cotton fabric. I just grabbed who wasn't folded off the table and, and off of this. So you can see, I know we had a question about, can you reuse it? This stayed pretty flat, so I would reuse this one, but do you see how it's kind of a little bit of wrinkles getting in there? Yeah. So I think, I don't think it's as reusable as other things that we do say, oh yes, that's definitely reusable. I don't think it's quite as hardy. Okay. So now I've got my vinyl. And I don't know about you guys, but I love heat. I ever since I resisted heat transfer vinyl for a long, long time. And I thought it was silly and I thought I didn't need it. And then it's once so, it's so great once I used it, uh, now it's an obsession. <laughs> now I have to have it all the time. <clears throat> so these are really simple shapes. So I'm just going to pull like I am. If you have more complicated shapes, that good pick, that pick tool, I tell you, everybody ought to have one. That pick tool, when I have a more complicated shape, will help me get in here and make sure that nothing tears, but help me lift up trouble areas. But because it's a star, you know, really, it's everything, everything just pops right off. If only all weeding of vinyl was that easy. Oh, that and then cool. I'm going to cut them apart just so I can have one at a time. I know everyone's like, I love the stars because we couldn't really see them on the screen. I was like, just wait for it. Wait, wait for, for it. it. <laughs> I know. That's the one, that's one of the things about the lives. It's a little hard to make sure that you can see all the details. And then I'll put some little stars around. And I always cut, like I thought I wanted three stars, but I always cut a few more than I think I need. Because if I change my mind, I would rather have the extra stars here and cut and ready. Yeah, I think I might still use those. And especially with something as basic as a star, I can save these. So, you know, I'll tell you what I do is I take um, clear acetate sheet. Oh, these are sticky and I stick them to it. And then there's just a clear sheet with all my different little random vinyl shapes that didn't get used. What a great idea. And then I just have that in a little folder. So generally speaking, when I am going to do a project like this, and I have these extras, I go and pull, I would normally go and pull out that folder. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I've been doing so much of this kind of like, let's make a custom this or, you know, just like, let's just make something a little fancier or a little more customized. Um, I've been doing so much of this though that I don't have anything in that folder at the moment. <laughs> so this would work, guys. You could do this. We could be working on a t shirt, we could be working on. This is a little tote bag, but we could be working on a lot of different things. This kind of crafting with the heat transfer vinyl or with the rhinestones, basically as long as it's some kind of fabric that you can actually put it onto. And then I just keep checking, am I actually on the area that, you know, especially when we get down to here, am I on the area where there's actually heat transfer vinyl and making sure my little spots are correct. And then again, you want to give it a, give it a moment to cool down. And with the rhinestones, sometimes if I'm trying to put heat, heat transfer vinyl right against the rhinestones on the edge closest, sometimes I will just do a little bit of pressing directly with the iron, just because it's a little easier to make sure that, because you do want everything to transfer nice and clean. And then it's the same process. Woo, there we go. That is so cute. Okay, that one's not quite ready. And I always lift slowly just because if it's not ready, it's real easy to just hit it with a little more heat 
versus if you tear something or, you know, mess something up. You don't want to do that. Let's see. I'm thinking more stars because I'm just liking them. They're just a lot of fun. So you can keep okay. adding more. What kind of vinyl are you using? Any specific, anything specific that somebody would need to know if they were a beginner? No. So you just want to make sure that you're using heat transfer vinyl. So versus sticker vinyl. I have both. And the sticker vinyl is going to be, and where'd it go? I had a whole bunch of it here. So the sticker vinyl, the difference is there's a sticker sheet on the back. Okay. And it's like, well, it's just like a stick. Think of it just like a sticker. You're seeing the shiny part and you're, you know, the sticker part and you're pulling this off directly and putting it onto something that a sticker could stick to. Mm -hmm. The heat transfer vinyl is funny because what you're seeing, the shiny part that you're seeing is not even the vinyl. The shiny part you're seeing is actually the transfer sheet. So when we pull this apart, that clear part, here, I'll put this on the... On the other one, too. Oh, the other one? Hold on one sec. Oh, there you go. So that clear part, that shine that you see, that's actually the transfer sheet. Oh, yeah. So that's not the vinyl at all. The vinyl, the heat transfer vinyl, you're looking at the glue, you know, the heat activated sticky part. You're looking at that side when you're looking at that. And then the shiny side is the transfer. So the heat transfer vinyl is the specific type. This particular, it comes a lot of different ways. You can find it locked. You can find it glittered. You can find it matte finish, shiny finish. I mean, there's so many different heat transfer vinyl styles. Anyone should work as long as it is heat transfer. That'll be your only must do is make sure that it's going to transfer with heat. But it's very, I warn you now, it's very addictive. Oop, let's see. There we go. Oh, there we go. Looks like this guy's being a little bit stubborn. It happens. Oh, we got there. Okay. So sometimes if I've got one that just one little corner is stubborn, I go ahead and just, oh, there we go. Yeah, the rhinestone pops. So what I will do, and I'll tell you guys this. So after we're done filming and everything, I will go through and I will just give it a little press and make sure that everything is really, really solid on there when I can get so that, ooh, that's what I thought. I thought there was a little rhinestone that looked a little suspicious and he fell off, which is fine. We can just, we can just press him back in place and say, please go back there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but normally, and you wouldn't, you're not in seat, but normally I would be here, you know, on top of it, not sitting way back. <laughs> so that, that's like so, doing a sewing demo where you're sewing from over here so you can do it for the camera but you totally can't see the needle <laughs> exactly so because i'm sitting way back over here yeah so this i would go back and read and and do that up and then i also i'm thinking some like ribbons and maybe a little button oh I yeah that's of, super cute a lot of fun things you could do with this but like I, i'll add some more little touches but it's so fun and you could do this to anything. We could do this to, I know I had a whole bunch of different things I was looking at. So you could do this to a t-shirt. You could do this to have a little clear zipper pouch. So if you were going to do this, you would probably want to do sticker vinyl. If we're talking about the sticker vinyl. That would probably be a good candidate for sticker vinyl. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of options from giftables to I've seen like wine bags. Um, could you layer the rhinestones on another color vinyl? Yes, you could. There's yes, you could. Yeah. Oh, hi, Reen. How are you? She wants to know if you can use a heat press with rhinestones. Um, I would think. I would assume so. I would. I've seen that done. I think actually, uh, Janet is in here. Janet, you used. Uh, leave a reply. I think I just saw her in here a second ago. I think she did a heat press with that. That's next on my bucket list for things that must be in my studio. <laughs> I know. I would. I oh, would Helen like says yes. Yes, well. Reen. They can. I love it when everybody in here helps each other because it's so great because so many of us have worked on so many different things. Um, and then there was another good question. Oh, when you cut your vinyl, do you have it uh, upside down or right side up? Because some people here were talking about when you have words, do you have to reverse it? You know, things okay, like that. Okay, so with vinyl, you're going, and I'm not going to use the same terms because it depends on which way. If you're talking right side as in 
the vinyl side, then yes, right side would be up. However, that's the back side of the vinyl. So to have, you want the vinyl up and the transfer sheet down. So if it's heat transfer vinyl, that means your transfer sheet down means that you're looking at the back side of the vinyl up. And it's important to remember because if we had sticker vinyl, the opposite is true because on sticker vinyl, when you cut it, whatever you cut is going to come directly up. So yes, if you do heat transfer vinyl and you're doing words, you need to reverse. And there's just a simple little button that you just click and your word reverses so that oh. it cuts backwards, which it sounds, sounds backwards, but it cuts backwards so that then when you weed it and flip it, it's correct. We like we like simple buttons. <laughs> I love simple buttons. <laughs> Make it as easy as you can. So I'm putting our websites down below. Also the blog.scanandcut.com because you want to go there. We are actually live streaming on the Scan and Cut YouTube page as well today. So um, the YouTube has a ton of videos showing a lot of this for those of you that want like more technical stuff that <laughs> that we can't Absolutely. finish in an hour, right, May? Absolutely. Well, and on the, yeah, and on the YouTube, a lot of the videos, you will get a really, really close up of that scan and cut machine screen. So you can really exactly see what to do and how to do it. But I promise you, it really is easy with a little bit of patience. Absolutely. Where's the button Nancy wants to know? It's in, I'll tell you where it is. It is in, so you pick any, I'll pick any pattern just to get it on there. So you go in, let's see if I can, yeah, you're not going to really be able to see, but when you go to edit, object edit, there's a little button, it's the dead center one, and it's got an arrow pointing one way, and an it's like two arrows pointing at each other with a line in between, and if you push that button, it reverses whatever, it just flips whatever it was. And if you push it again, it puts it back. So if you have text on here and you push that, then the text, it would be the equivalent. Okay, I mean, we can use this guy because I have it here. So it'd be the oh, equivalent of. I'll bring that back up. Sorry about that. I'll do it this way. So if, if I have this love, right, and I push that middle button, it would go like this. Oh, yeah. And then if I push it again, it'll go back like this. So it's Very a really easy. it's just that it's that easy and then you just say okay and carry on like you would be cutting anything else very nice everybody's saying thank you thank you may thank you for all the great tips <laughs> oh i'm happy to share i i love talking about the scanning cut i know when we're at uh, events or conventions or anything i know it's always like okay i need i need to stop talking about this <laughs> i have so much fun with it so I'm going to share my screen because I have my Canvas workspace open for those that um, that were wondering how to do this. So let me just bring this up. And then hopefully we don't freeze. Sometimes when I bring this extra screen up, it's just enough internet to make everything not work. <laughs> so here is my Canvas workspace projects. There's a ton of projects in here if you've never gone to this. And I think I actually still have the last rhinestone ones that I did. And you can see them. There was baby. I did um, some butterflies, my initials, hearts. These were all rhinestone designs that I had on there. And so let's see what else we have in here. I haven't been in here in a little while. Just to give you an idea of what to expect if you go in here. And there's the Disney ones. So there's a lot of options. Do you, do you work a lot, May? Um, do you find, I, I find it very easy to navigate in here as well. And at first I never use this. I just did everything right in the scan and cut, which a lot of it you can, but um, I end up going through here and just getting great ideas. I do too. And I end up using, so where you're at now, those are all free. Those are all free designs. And I end up going in there and using a lot of them. Sometimes I make the project they intend. Oh. Hey, I need this. This is what we could oh, put on a mask. So cute. <laughs> that's so cute. This is what I need on my coffee cups. I don't even have a coffee cup today. I have water, but um, I, I love that. Okay, I'm going to have to definitely uh, be downloading this one. And that's all you do. Download. And there's the designs. Pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, that is, and there's a lot of them. Like, those designs, you could do 
you could do those. You could turn those into a greeting card. You could use them on a mug. A lot of these free designs, you can take it and turn it into your own project idea. But I love that they have, they have the instructions. They have it all downloadable for you. It's so easy to use. Well, you just saw my next project. <laughs> I know. I've seen a couple in there that I don't. I There's a couple of newer ones in there that I haven't played with. So I'll have to check that out later. <laughs> Everyone's like the cups. Everyone knows me in my cups. I just always have something different and unique, but I love those faces. <laughs> I think you know what I'm thinking too. Those would be fun. I, I just found a plain uh, glass jar that I was thinking would be fun to hold like my pens and things. And I could see putting one of those on that and then having my pens and things in a funny face. That would be so fun. That would be very cute. Uh, Stacy, you want to know the price range of a scan and cut? So if you, you know, there's different variations of the scan and cut. So what I would encourage you to do is to call your local brother dealer and see what they're offering right now. Because there's always different deals going on and things like that. So I really can't say exactly what the price point is. And then there are other machines you can get um, on the mass market, but they're different levels. So what she has there is a limited edition, which is very cool. All right, making sure I'm not missing. <laughs> Put the cup smiles on a face mask. That's what I was thinking, Meg. I think that would be oh, so cute. That's a great idea. Yeah. Now, don't embroider on the out. If you're going to do the, if for embroidery, by the way, we were having this whole discussion last week about decorating masks and stuff like that. So um, if you're going to do embroidery, have it on an outside piece of fabric. Because I've heard from quite a few people that they didn't want all the puncture holes I am not a nurse and I am not a scientist, so I don't know all the technicalities, but I try to keep up on some of the things to know what to do and what not to do. So, uh, but that would be very cute with a vinyl. That's what a great idea. That is a fun, that would be so cute. Everybody's saying thanks. Well, May, this was a lot of fun. If you guys have more questions, you can, uh, which machine does she have there? That is the Disney Scan and Cut. And you guys can go back and watch this video, by the way. You can save it to your Facebook page, uh, or you can come back to Brother Sews or Brother Crafting at any time to watch these, or Brother YouTube as well. So um, there's above us, that's our Instagram handles. May has the cutest Instagram ever. So follow us, and if you post photos of what we're working on, make sure you tag us. I have our websites down below where you can see that. And also, we are giving away another... Machine number two out of 10 on Friday, a sewing machine. So there are links on my website, AngelaWolf.com. And if you message me, I can send you a link to how you signed up. So even just commenting today, though, you also got an extra entry. So good luck, everyone. That's Friday at noon. So May, what are you doing the rest of the week? Anything exciting? Well, Saturday is International Scrapbooking Day. So oh. I'm gearing up. I'm going to do a bunch of Facebook Lives and different things just sharing different projects and scrapbooking stuff. And then also with the leftovers, doing different projects with the leftovers. So I'm excited for that. That's, I mean, we all have to be at home for it, but I honestly tend to do virtual crop type things anyway, because it's easier to just be at my house <laughs> and have everything I need. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'm excited to do lots more, lots more scrapbooking. My scrapbooking is way behind. Well, that's very exciting. So a friend of mine, uh, we she just came on live. Uh, Peg sent me some eggs. They're um, uh, pheasant eggs. So they're all different colors and they're little. So you have to do the egg tutorial again, just for eggs, because I think it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, her, you know what? I'm, you're reminding me. I need to double check if I have that. I don't think I ever put a YouTube up of that. So I'll have to do that. Oh, if you do, let me know. And I'll make sure the wolf pack gets it too, because we were talking about that. You got us all from garments to... We want to paint eggs. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So, May, you know what next week is? I don't, actually. Uh, if my oh. calendar is correct, of course, it's going to be Tuesday. <laughs> I actually I just sent an email that said, what is next week? <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. Oh, that's right. Yes, on your day. Oh, that's extra special because I, yeah, I won't give it away, but then that's extra, that's extra, extra special. All right, so next week's show, you guys, come back Tuesday at 1, Crafting with May. <laughs> so, everyone, thank you for coming in. It was great to see you. May, I hope you have. How do you find May on YouTube? So the uh, easiest way to find me is just click my the website link, and there's a direct YouTube, Facebook. There's direct links right off of my website. So you can see the websites right below. 
Mayflom.com, AngelaWolf.com, blog.scanandcut.com. If you can't find something, just message one of us and oh, yeah. we can help. Oh, yeah, that's another way. You could just you could just send a message and I'll send you over a link too. Yes. And Deanna, yes, the scan and cut is great to use on fabric. In fact, I have a tutorial that's coming up, and you might notice some of the brother dealers have been doing these live shows showing how to uh, go from the sewing machine for embroidery to the scan and cut to cut the pieces for applique. It's great. And it's also great for cutting little quilt pieces. But I have a few episodes where I actually cut uh, designs into a skirt. Uh, that was on It's So Easy. So those are on my YouTube channel if you go find those. So there's a lot of creativity that you can do with this. It's a lot of fun. So, all right, everybody's saying see ya, May. It was great to see you today. So much fun. I love coming. It's so much fun these shows are. I love it. I know. It's like my we get to chat with people from all over the world just from the simplicity of our home, but we're all sewing and crafting together, which is cool. It really is. All right, see you next week. Bye, everyone. And the rest of you, uh, this afternoon, uh, let's see, 4.30, Cindy Hogan's going to be on, and tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The whole schedule is in the Brother uh, Facebook page. So, all right. Bye, May. Have a great day. Thanks.